Greetings, friend. I will show you how to solve Sudoku autagons. I'll explain how to identify and solve single value, by value, and even tri value autagons through three examples. The last one's the most important. And you need to watch it to fully understand the strategy. Puzzle and video links are in the description below. And with that, it's solving time. Our first example is from Philip Newman's called Dragonfly. It's from the Sudoku Cult puzzle pack available on the CTT Discord. Philip made this to kind of show how autogons work, single value autogons. And if you want to solve uniquely themed Sudoku puzzle packs like this, then you should consider joining the Smarty Party. Click on the link in the description below. So an autogon is also known as a broken wing. And the simple definition is this. It's a closed loop with an odd number of strong links. Now, if you're not sure what strong links are you do need to understand what a strong and weak link is i'll explain it here but i suggest that you are very familiar with my x y chain tutorial before we move on to this discussion this is a highly advanced strategy you need to kind of understand that basic concept okay so let's see how that works if you're looking at this grid and you look in this top left corner you'll notice it's going to be a one or two if you want to figure out is this going to be a one or is it going to be a two? First, we'll look at all the candidate ones. So if I put this in the blue, this is where all the candidate ones can be. But I want you to focus on some very specific squares here. And I'll explain why here in just a second. So first, we'll put all the ones here in the blue. And then I'm going to look at these seven squares, these cells in the green. This is going to be very important to us here as I show you this concept. And then what we want to do here is if we put a one up in this top left corner, what would happen? What of these blue cells, which note where ones could be, would be eliminated? So all those would be eliminated, right? If you put a one right there, one could be in any of those spots. And I'll also get rid and show you that the ones then would be in these green cells. So this is an important concept you want to understand. And please stay with me because this is where I'm going to explain exactly how this autogon function works. What you'll notice is that all of these green cells have strong links with each other, and there's seven in this closed loop. So this cell, to strong this one, that means if this is false, that has to be a one. If this is false, that has to be a one. And so you go strong here, strong here. There's only two, strong here, strong here. There's only two within this block, so that's a strong link, and up here is strong. But there's seven strong links, and this is not good. This is... is called the autogon. So the idea is if you put a one right here, you're going to create this closed loop of seven cells with all strong links of ones. This cell, row one, column one, is called a guardian. And it's cell candidates that prevent the autogon pattern. So you're trying to do is you're trying to prevent this pattern. Why is this pattern so bad? And I'll show you that here in just a second. All right, so let's say you put a one right here. If you put a one right there, this couldn't be a one. This would be a one. This couldn't be a one. This would be a one. This couldn't be a one. And now, where could you have a one in row two? Well, you can't put it there because you already have a one right here. And you can't put it here because you already have a one right there. And so all these strong links means there's no place for one. You break the puzzle. And so this is what the autogon is telling you. It's saying this is a pattern you want to avoid. And so what you do is you have to solve this cell correctly. And you'll avoid this autogon pattern. So if you solve this cell for a one, you create an autogon, you break the puzzle. So we know this cell cannot be a one. This cell has to be a two. And then we prevent this autogon pattern. Okay, I want to make a couple more points here. One, the guardian could be part of this autogon. It could be one of those cells or it can be outside of it. I'm going to show you one where it's inside the autogon loop. This one's outside. Two, it can be, this case, we know that the guardian has to be false. Like it, they can't be a one to prevent this. But there's the second case I'm about to show you, it needs to be true in order to prevent this. And this is kind of cool. So let's move on to our next example. For our second example, this is Kettle by Jovial. I saw this in a previous video, the link's below, and it shows a by value autogon. All right, so if you notice right here in block one, it can only be an eight or nine, and in block nine, it can only be an eight or nine remaining. So that's kind of clue you in that something's going on with the eights and nines. 
And if you looked right here and figured out what could be in this cell, it's also an eight or a nine. So you notice that the eight or nine are limited to these two cells. This is a naked pair across row two and up column eight. And then you do some other filling in. You'll see that this can be a four, eight, nine. This can only be a four, nine because of block five. And that could only be a four, eight, nine. These cells are critical for figuring out and seeing how this strategy plays in. So what you're looking at with the uh, with jovial here and she's really good about kind of creating these strategies and going like a little bit the next level with it in fact there's another puzzle that i'm going to put at the end which combines autogons with coloring you're going to want to check it out so i'll put that at the end but right here what you want to see is you know can we distinguish what these cells are going to be you know could we remove four from then do we need a solve for eight nine how does that work out and how does it play into this middle? Because Jovial's wanting you to look at columns or blocks one, five, and nine. So if you go right here and you go, okay, what if we remove the fours from both of those cells? All right. And so these now end up being your guardians, right? And we'll just highlight those in yellow. If you remove the fours from both of those cells, what would end up happening? You have an eight, nine naked pair right here. So an eight, nine couldn't be down there because they're limited to these two cells. Then you have an 8-9 naked pair right here. So 8-9 can be in those two cells. And so an 8-9 would be limited to these two cells here in block 7. Okay, and now what is the problem with that? The problem with that is that you've now created a by-value autogon. Okay, and here's why. Because 8-9 here, let's do some solving. This is an 8. This is a 9. That would be an 8. This would be a nine. What could you put right there? You can't put an eight or a nine there because eight's here, nine's there. And you could go back and swap the nines and eights. You're still going to have the same problem. Something else to keep in mind, and I've always noticed with these autogons, is in at least one block, you're going to need to have a strong link within the block. You can't just have it between rows and columns. Uh, it, it doesn't work out. You need to have like this little elbow in there to make this odd amount. But since we have five cells, and I just showed you that if this is the case, you'd break the puzzle. You'd have a, one of these cells where you could put an 8 or a 9. This is a by-value autogon. So we have to avoid that pattern. How do we avoid that pattern? We avoid it by going, okay, one of these cells has to be a 4, right? And since we know one of these cells has to be a 4, we know these are our guardians. And that means that with our guardians, this right here cannot be a four because we have a four here here so we can eliminate a four from this cell and solve it for a nine awesome so i wanted to show you this example and kind of show you how guardians work there's more than one of them and then what happens if you know the guardian cell is true in this case the four would be true before i get to our third example subscribe to smart hobbies and so you can solve sudoku even better all right for our third example this is donut by shy i did this puzzle is part of the speed setting competition with meme rister a uh, link to that video below and whenever you see this pattern right here you know you have a tri value autogon tri value autogon this was shown to me first by philip newman thor's hammer loki um, and the idea here is you have three candidates the seven eight and nine and now the guardian cells are going to be these two cells right here and they're actually going to be within the autogon themselves, which is kind of cool. And so I wanted to show this as an example. And so what you'll see is if when you see this pattern, you'll know that you can't have just seven, eights, and nines, or else you're going to break the puzzle. So you know, this cell has to have a five, and or this cell has to have a six. And this is what we showed in the video. But I'm going to show you why that matters. And you're going like, well, where's the seven or the five or the odd number of strong links here? I don't understand Timberlake. So I'm going to show you that here. So let's color these back to blue and we kind of do some quick solving this is not a five and this is not a six and we got to figure out what would happen here first of all this is going to be a six and then this would be your five and this actually helps you determine uh, whether you can have both five or six in here or one or the other and i'll, I'll explain all that in the actual solving video I did of this 
great puzzle. Anyway, let's look right here and go, why is this pattern, why can't this be true? Because you put a seven here and let's put, you know, a nine there, put the eight there. Then what you see is this is your eight. And then this would be your seven and this would be your nine. We come up here, this is a seven. And this would be a nine. This would be your seven, and this would be an eight. And so far, you're looking okay, right? It seems like. But then right here, you got this right here, seven, eight, nine. Can't be anything, right? Because you got nine here, an eight here, and a seven there. So what could you put in that cell? Nothing. You can't put anything in the cell. And so it breaks the pattern. And you could go seven, eight, nine here. You could go eight, seven, nine. It doesn't matter what you start with. Once you fill out these two, you're going to start creating a problem up here. So I'm going to show you a little bit more about how, like, there's a buy value aspect to this and why you have those strong links. So it may not be easy to see where the strong links come from and why you have an odd number. So I remove the colors and let's focus on these three cells right here. Okay. You focus on these three cells and we'll put them in the pink. You notice there's, you know, they're all the same by value cells here. And then in here, you know that one of these cells has to be a nine, right? And so you put the nine, let's say you put it right here. What does that create? It will create another by value cell. And so you, you go right there. And then this is probably the simplest way to see it, but you, now you'd have one, two, three, four, five by value cells that all have strong links. And so that creates your autogon problem. So then we know that you can't have, this is just a seven, eight, or this is just a seven or an eight. And hopefully you see that and you can play around with the other numbers and hopefully you'll kind of come to the same conclusion that there's going to be like this by value problem going on, a single value problem going on and it creates an autogon. And so you have to put something in those cells. And later on in the solving video, I show you why it's either a five is, is here or a six is there. It can't be both. Uh, very cool. So you, you can also check that out. But this is important. I wanted to show you where the odd number of strong links comes from. And I'll just kind of do it with a small example related to a tri-value autogon. You need to check out this other video. It puts autogons on a whole new level for you. Thank you so much for all the setters for letting me feature these puzzles on my channel. And thank you so much for watching.